Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I am so so excited to be filming my October, a new October Cozy Mysteries video. This is a video I do monthly on my channel, so if you love Cozy Mysteries, definitely hit subscribe. And we're just gonna go ahead and jump in. So our first book is a Christmas Cozy, and it is called A Christmas Candy Killing. This is a brand new series, book one in the series, and this is written by Christina Romero. And this is recommended to fans of Joanne Fluke and Laura Childs. It is a debut mystery. Wait till you hear the setting of this. So we have our twins Alex and Hannah who are protagonists, they're identical twins, and they run a mystery bookshop. Already amazing. But not only is it a bookshop, but they sell killer chocolates there as like part of the themed, you know, part of the theme for their mystery shop, which I think is incredible. So shortly before Christmas, their septuagenarian neighbor Jane actually talks to Alex and she confides that there is a murderer from a true crime show that has taken residence in their village. So she's really concerned and she also shares her suspicions with town gossip Netta. The next morning, Alex shows up at Jane's house to watch the show, but she actually ends up finding Jane's body with a box of their killer chocolates nearby. So the sheriff quickly zero ins on two suspects, Alex, so one of our main characters and one of the twin sisters because she is a beneficiary in Jane's will, and then Zach who is a handyman who was seen leaving the crime scene. So Alex is maintaining her innocence and she creates a list of potential suspects and she starts talking to them trying to figure out who might have actually been upset with Jane, was it the killer that she was thinking was coming to town, like what happened here, and she also gets a hold of Jane's journal and she starts to learn more and understand the truth and everything about what is kind of going on and what Jane was going to tell her about the murderer that came to town. So this is really exciting, it's a brand new series, I absolutely adore the theme, I love how there's both like the candy chocolate part and then the mystery bookshop, like what more could you want in a cozy mystery in my opinion. Alex sounds like she will be an interesting sleuth. I'm excited to see how she goes about clearing her name and figuring out what actually happened to her friend. And yeah, this is our first Christmas cozy that we're talking about today. All right, so our next one is called A Doomful of Sugar. This is also a debut new cozy mystery series. And this is the Maple Syrup Mysteries, book one, written by Katherine Bruns, who is a US Today bestselling author. And this book will be coming out on October 25th. So our main character in this is named Layla, and she has recently returned home after after finding out that her father was killed and she's just shocked and confused her mother is grieving and her brother is actually a suspect in the murder and she's just shocked because everyone in town seemed to really love her father her father was running a maple syrup business which was very popular so she returns home to help her mother and brother you know as they're grieving together and also to take over the business so she starts to go through suspects and trying to really like sleuth and figure out who did this to her father and to clear her brother's name in the process this mystery also includes five delicious maple like recipes so if you're a big culinary cozy mystery fan this does have five recipes in it and this is just perfect for fall I mean look at this darling cover perfect for fall so our next one is a historical fiction cozy mystery called a trace of poison this is written by Colleen Cambridge this is book two within the Philidia bright mystery book series and this will be coming out on October 25th as well so this next one is a mystery for you if you like historical fiction cozies and if you love Agatha Christie because Philidia is actually like a maid or housekeeper within Agatha Christie's household. So this actually takes place during the time that Agatha and her husband Max were living in a manor and Philidia is their housekeeper and also kind of a confidant with Agatha. She enjoys like discussing grisly details and stuff like that. There is a like a charity event that is about to happen and it's going to be attended by a bunch of members of the Detection Club which includes Agatha Christie herself and Dorothy L. Sayers and some other popular writers that you're sure to recognize. So the party actually features a publishing contract and like a writing contest. So whoever writes like these for amateur writers and stuff whoever writes the best manuscript will land a publishing contest so there's some really big prizes at this charity event and they're really excited for it the lydia is actually running some of the event herself so she's very much involved in this however someone actually drinks a poisoned cocktail which they believe was intended for the 
person who's favored to win the publishing contest. And so Philidia and her employer Agatha start to narrow down the list of suspects and find out who would have wanted that man out of the way. They're thinking it could be a cause like they wanted him out of the way for their ambition so that they could be published. There's a lot of different suspects and this just sounds delightful. I haven't read anything from the series yet but the fact that Agatha Christie is involved and it's historical this just sounds amazing. Let me know if you've read this because I'm so intrigued after reading this summary. So the next one is the one I'm probably the most excited for this release. Um, there's a couple of my favorite authors who are releasing this coming month, but this one might be the one I'm just the most excited for, and that is called Blackmail and Babinka. This is by Mia P. Manansala. This is part of the Tita Rosie's Kitchen Mystery, and it is book three in the series, and this will be coming out on October 4th. And I love this series. Like, I read Arsenic and Adobo at the beginning of the year, and then I read A Homicide and Halo Halo, which was even better somehow. I I cannot express how much I loved book two, even it, it, this surpassed book one, even though I adored that book. So I'm so excited for book three in the series. Basically, our main character, Lila, is really excited that Christmas time is approaching in Shady Palms. She things are going well for her, you know. Her new business, the Bruja Cafe, which she opened with some of her friends, is actually going to turn a profit in its first year, which is really unheard of, you know, in business and in like the restaurant world especially. She's also recently taken a step forward in a new romance with a friend, which she's excited for. Unfortunately, her cousin Ronnie comes back to town after ghosting the family 15 years ago, and he claims that his recent purchase of a local winery shows that he's back on his feet and he's ready to contribute to the community and, you know, he's back for good, basically. So Tita Rossi, who is her, this is her son, she is super excited that he's back, but Lila is just really concerned about this because she loves her aunt and she's concerned that her aunt's getting her hopes up essentially and this is going to go very poorly because unfortunately Ronnie, wherever he goes, trouble follows. Unfortunately, Lila is proven right when Ronnie is suspected of murder and there's a lot of secrets coming out about her shady cousin and even some that are involved with the winery and maybe like maybe it was a cover for something. They're starting to pile up and Lila has to put aside her feelings, you know, in favor of the Christmas season and just kind of help her family out here by clearing Ronnie's name even though she is concerned that he maybe like maybe he actually did it so she puts aside her personal feelings and she starts to work on the case for the sake of her aunt basically and I couldn't recommend this series enough it is a little bit on the darker side for cozy but it's still definitely a cozy mystery um, it just deals with a little more real world issues than some do I highly recommend it Lila is a very compelling character her family is very well written fleshed out there's a lot of family drama and things that I really enjoy the mysteries have always been really interesting to me and the last one floored me like absolutely I just sat there like in tears because it was such a good re like reveal so I cannot wait for this book highly recommend the series if you haven't checked it out already so our next book is written by Diane Kelly and it's called a trip with trouble and this is the Mountain Lodge mystery series it is book two in the series and it will be coming out on October 25th and so our main character in this is named Misty Murphy and she's like in a woman's motorcycle group and they have booked out this mountaintop lodge they've cleared the premises they're all staying there they're having a great time and they're ready to celebrate autumn and go on some beautiful autumn rides together. So one day they take a trip and they're, you know, all on the... <laughs> I don't know anything about motorcycles, I'm sorry, but they're all on their trip together and everything's going well, it's beautiful out. However, the last person who's like at the tail end of their group doesn't show up. So they're immediately concerned and they're also in a place with no cell phone coverage because they're up in the mountains. So they immediately take off to try to find their friend to see, you know, did she, did she break down somewhere? Is she okay? Is there foul play? Like, is she missing? Like, you know, what has happened here basically? Okay, quick correction. So Misty isn't actually part of the motorcycle group, but she is at the mountaintop lodge and they invite her along. So she takes them up on it and that's kind of how she gets involved with it. And so the, the motorcycle ladies are really upset about their friend and Misty is trying to comfort them and also figure out what happened and assess the situation. So she puts her detective hat on and starts to sleuth around and figure out what happened to this woman. So the next book is from the very popular Meg Langslow mystery series. This is book 32 within the series and it's called Dashing Through the Snowbirds. This is written by Donna Andrews and it will be coming out on October 11th. 
So unfortunately, this Christmas isn't looking so bright for Meg. She is essentially forced on this like work retreat by a really inconsiderate boss who takes her and a bunch of other employees at the business away from their families during the holiday season for this like work retreat. So they are working together, they're getting things done when the boss is actually found dead. Now this man had a huge list of people who could have wanted them dead because you know, he had all these employees that were disgruntled for different reasons and also just being annoyed that they're taken away from their family during Christmas. And on top of that, the business that they're doing is involved with like forensics and genetics and stuff and the company is being sued by people who are claiming that the results are incorrect. So there are a lot of people who could have wanted the boss dead and so Meg is on the case trying to figure out what, hap what happened exactly and trying to save Christmas basically. So this is such a bright, happy, cheerful cover absolutely sounds really fun. I love the general concept of this. It sounds like it might be, it might fall into a little bit of an isolation trope, at least with the employees like being cut off from their families and stuff. So that's always an interesting trope in my opinion. And yeah, this one sounds really fun. So our next one is another Christmas cozy. It's that time of year and it's called High Spirits. It is part of the Haunted Haven mystery series. It's book two in the series and it's written by Carol J. Perry. This book will be coming out on October 25th. So this is a supernatural cozy. It also takes place during Christmas. Maureen is our main character and she is a New England transplant who has moved to Florida. So this is her first Christmas without like heavy snow. It's going to be kind of weird for her. But she is looking forward to the change and she decides to drum up business for the inn she's running which is haunted. And she decides to do this like 12 days of Christmas event at a local movie theater. So everything's going well until they find out that there was a man that was actually murdered there a few years back and his ghost allegedly still haunts the place. So the cop in town kind of doesn't believe in ghosts, but he reluctantly asks Maureen for her help because she saw the previous case and seems like she might have some kind of supernatural abilities potentially. And everything, you know, is going okay until a body is actually found on opening day in the movie theater. So there's a brand new murder that happened, there's the murder of the man a few years ago, so it looks like there might be maybe some kind of link between like a past and present case or just both mysteries, which I think is always fun. And this one does have supernatural elements, the Christmas. I feel like having it in Florida for Christmas is kind of interesting because a lot of times you know, Christmas books take place in like woods, the forest, the mountains, the snow basically. Um, so this is kind of a fun change of pace. So our next book is coming out on October 11th and that is Crime for Books, a Jane Doe book club mystery. This is by Kate Young and this is the third mystery in the series. It is recommended for fans of Ellery Adams. So I can't tell you how much I love the idea for this plot. This plot is based on A Murder is Announced by Agatha Christie, which I'm actually currently about halfway through and just loving it. It's such a brilliant plot. It's really incredible. So our main character in this is named Lydia and she and her book club are doing like a a fun like party based on a murder is announced so there's like a staged murder you know everything's kind of staged like the setting of the book unfortunately when they turn the lights back on there's an actual victim with a gunshot so someone was actually murdered at this party which obviously was not what they were going for and one of the members Elaine was actually like related to the victim and she was seen arguing with her earlier in the day and so she's an immediate suspect in the case which doesn't look good for her. Another member of the Jane Doe book group who is there is also a cop. So they team up with her, her name is Rosa, and they team up with her to try to figure out what exactly happened. During their research they actually find out that two other murders had been predicted online and had actually happened. So there seems to be some kind of weird tie-in with the murder is announced, like this seems to be a trend. Unfortunately, the next murder to be announced is actually uh, announces that the murder victim is Rosa, the cop. So Lydia and her book group think they know who the killer is and they set up a trap with Rosa as the bait basically to capture the killer. So they have to be very careful because they don't want Rosa to actually end up a murder victim and there's just a lot at stake so they want to clear the other person's name and this just sounds so much fun. I love the idea that they're doing a murder is announced book club like meeting. How fun is that? How creative. I love the idea that their group is called Jane Doe's. I think this is just so much fun. So I haven't read this series but this definitely I gotta add this to my TBR. It sounds fantastic. So our next one is a book I talked about in the new Autumn and Supernatural Cozy Mysteries I did recently and that is called The Ghost and the Stolen Tears and this is part of Cleo Coyle's Haunted Bookshop Mystery Series. It is book eight in the series. 
So our main character in this is named Penelope and she is a bookshop owner and she just loves her job and she recently hired a new employee, Norma. Norma is a modern day nomad and she lives out of her van and her teardrop trailer. She is very big on solitude and just being outside, reading, she loves nature. And Penelope, our main character, is just really excited to have her working at the bookshop because she's just really great at it. And so everything is going okay. The bookshop itself is haunted and everything is going okay until Norma's other job gets in the way. Norma works at the Finch Inn as a housekeeper and she's gotten into terrible trouble. She is accused of stealing jewels from a guest room, which is the legendary Valentino Teardrops, which is an antique necklace and earring set that is inherited by a young socialite. Penelope, of course, doesn't believe Norma is guilty of this at all, and so she starts to really look into it. Unfortunately, the evidence against Norma is really strong, and Norma actually ends up vanishing before her arrest, which does make her look less guilty, and Penelope is really concerned about her now. So Penelope, it sounds like, has some kind of supernatural gift, where maybe she can talk to spirits, and unfortunately she finds out from a spirit that in the 1940s, the same Valentino teardrops necklace and earrings that were stolen were also involved in a weird case with betrayal and murder. So she looks, it looks like things are going to repeat themselves, and Penn, with the help of her ghost friend Jack, are going to kind of get on this case, figure out what happened, and clear Norma's name. This just sounds fantastic. I haven't read anything by Cleo Coyle. I need to. It's been on my list for a while. And this book series just sounds incredible. I'm really excited for this. So our next book has the cutest name. It's called Kill Them with Canvas. I love that. I love that name. And this is part of the Paint by Murder mystery book series. It's book two in the series. It's written by Bailey Abbott. And it is going to come out on October 11th. So our main characters in this are Chloe and Izzy and they're sisters and they have run this business that's really fun. They do like painting parties and things like on the road so they'll host like painting parties and they're invited to do this Halloween party. So they're super excited. They have their Aunt Constance who's going to be there and a bunch of other ladies and they're setting up and they actually are doing the painting based on this ghost legend about a woman who like comes back every Halloween and, and just, you know, a spooky, fun cho choice for the Halloween party. Everything at the party is going off without a hitch. Everyone's having fun until she overhears her Aunt Constance and Viola, who is the director of Sisterhood in the area, having this huge blowout argument. Unfortunately, the next morning, Viola is found dead in a nearby water, much like the ghost legend they were painting that night. And not only that, but Constance's hat is near the murder scene, which really doesn't look good for her aunt. And they find a mysterious canvas left at the painting party that depicts the scene of Viola like dead in the water, which is very eerie, very, very creepy. And of course, Aunt Constance denies that she had any involvement. She says that she lost her hat during the event, but the police are kind of looking at her as a serious suspect between the hat at the crime scene and the big argument they had the night before. So Chloe and Izzy are on the case to try to figure out what exactly happened to their friend and also clear their aunt's name in the process. I love the concept of the painting parties. How fun is that? The only thing I have to say about this is that based on this cover, I had no idea this was a Halloween mystery. Like this looks like spring to me or summer. Like it's very chipper. It's very bright. There's like nothing, you know, autumn themed on it at all. I wish they kind of had like a little bit of a Halloween touch, but otherwise I love this. I think the concept for this is incredible. Let me know if you've read this because I definitely am intrigued after listening to the summary. So our next book is a perfect one if you are a coffee lover. It's called Live and Let Grind, A Coffee Lover's Mystery. This is book three in the series. It's written by Tara Lush and it will be coming out on October 11th. So our main character in this is Lana and she is a reporter turned journalist. She had recently opened a coffee shop on the beach called Purgatory. Love the name. And she, everything's going well. Business is going well. Her romantic life is going well. The only thing that's kind of bothering her is her annoying neighbor Gus, who incessantly uses his leaf blower. It's driving all the neighbors crazy, but you know, she learns to tune him out. Unfortunately, her best friend just can't tune him out. She, she's just really annoyed by the noise that's really getting on her nerves. 
Well, when Gus is found dead, Erica, her best friend, is immediately suspected in the crime. So Lana starts to look into the many people who would have wanted this man dead. For starters, all of the neighbors in the area were just really annoyed by him. His wife was about to be like written out of his will or something like that. So there's some spousal conflict there as well. And he also has some angry investors who had purchased like a pirate themed cruise business from him and the business went under really quickly. Like there was some kind of something shady about the business deal basically. Lana is on the case trying to clear her best friend's name and also catch the Augustus killer basically. This sounds really fun. I love the idea of the coffee shop on the beach. It's recommended for fans of Cleo Coyle which she has a coffee shop mystery as well so that sounds sounds like a perfect recommendation right there. So our next book is called Soul of a Killer. This is by Abby Collette. This will be coming out on October 4th and this is part of the Books and Biscuits mystery and is book two in the series. I recently just started book one and I'm really enjoying it. It involves two fraternal twins who have made their way back into each other's lives as adults and they have opened a business together. So Keaton and Kobe are the twins and they opened a place called Books and Biscuits together which is a bookshop and like food place all in one. They're located in the Pacific Northwest in a place called Timber Lake which just sounds gorgeous. So Mama Zola is in town and she is Kobe's devoted foster mother. They have a really great relationship and Mama Zola and one of the bookstore's employees, Pete, bring a peach cobbler to a like business employee like potluck or like community potluck basically. Unfortunately someone who eats the the peach cobbler ends up dying. So Pete and Mama Zola are immediately suspects in this murder and of course the twins know that they had nothing to do with it, they would never poison anybody, and so they're working on the case to try to clear Mama Zola and Pete's names. So I'm really excited. That so far I've really been enjoying book one in this series and I've really liked Abby Collette's ice cream shop mystery or ice cream parlor mystery I believe it's called as well. So I'm really excited for this. I think she's a great writer and I definitely recommend the series. So our next one is perfect if you are a bookish cozy mystery fan or a cat cozy mystery fan because it combines both and that is called The Crime That Binds. It's a bookmobile cat mystery written by Lori Cass and this is book 10 in the series. It will be coming out on October 4th and it features librarian Minnie and her cat Eddie. And so it sounds like Minnie and Eddie basically live in this bookmobile and they live in the small town of Michigan. It takes, this cozy takes place during late March. The weather's beautiful. They're going out delivering different comfort reads to residents in the area. While Minnie and Eddie are on their route, they encounter something strange. They see a man named Ryan who is a frequent patron of their bookmobile and he is like racing away from police and makes like a sharp u-turn and he's like trying to get away like he's dangerously driving and she later finds out that the police are trying to find him to question him about a bank robbery and a murder and they are immediately like there is no way this man commit like this is he's innocent there's no way and he's out there in hiding they end up encountering him at some point and he talks them into helping them like basically clear his name so Minnie and Eddie are on the case trying to solve what exactly has happened and it, it sounds really intriguing. I love the idea of a bookmobile. I haven't read this series. I really want to after reading this. Let me know if you have because it sounds really fun. So this next one is one that has been my, one of my most anticipated releases all year long and that's one by Jen McKinley who's one of my favorite cozy mystery authors and this is The Plot and the Pendulum. This is a Halloween cozy and it's going to be book 13 within the Library Lovers Mystery series. It will be coming out on October 11th. So our main character in this is Lindsay Norris. She's the library director of, of Briar Creek Library and she loves her job. You know, everything's going well and she's really excited to find out that the library is going to be the beneficiary of the Dorchester family's vast book collection. However, when Lindsay and her library staff arrive on the premises and they're going through the books and trying to, you know, see what they're going to take and everything, they actually find a, a bookcase that has a secret passage to a hidden room behind it. Unfortunately, in the hidden room, a skeleton is found and the skeleton is clutching a copy of the collected works of Edgar Allan Poe, which is pretty creepy, a little sinister there. Uh, Lindsay starts to do a check for missing persons and she finds out um, because the woman is wearing distinct 80s era clothing that this woman might be a someone who they thought was a runaway bride. Unfortunately, it looks like this person didn't actually run away from their wedding. They were actually murdered. So there were no suspects that were ever arrested because they thought it was a runaway situation and the cold case has been unsolved. So Lindsay and her Craftoon Club, which 
which is basically a group of Lindsay and some of her friends and different library people who all get together to craft and review books together. Like It's like an ongoing monthly book club and they meet, talk about the book, and do crafts together. And they've also been helpful in previous cases. So they kind of tackle the situation and look at it from all angles, try to figure out what exactly happened. Personally, I love a cold case mystery, so this is perfect. And this takes place right before Halloween, so it's just perfect for this time of year. So our next book is a very springing, fun, fresh book. It's called The Plot That Thickets, a Garden Squad mystery. It's written by Julia Henry. It is book five in the series and it will be coming out on October 25th. So this cozy mystery takes place in the New England town of Goose Bush, Massachusetts, and it involves our main character Lily and her garden squad, and they're getting ready for spring. They're really, really excited. They're kind of deciding what their next project is going to be, and they decide to clean up and maybe like replant some flowers and things in a local cemetery. And everything is going well until they find some graves that have been like really neglected and for no particular reason they've also been rearranged like it's very strange um, however Lily and her garden squad are kicked off the premises by a woman named Whitney who doesn't want them there basically um, however shortly after that Whitney is found dead and things aren't looking so good one of the suspects is actually part of the garden crew so Lily and her friends are like we need to solve this we need to clear her name and there's a lot of people who might have wanted Whitney dead recently Whitney was accused of some like illegal business practices she also has um, one of her employees who's really disgruntled with her and her stepdaughter Sasha who is also really upset with her and both of them have also been charged with uh, crimes as well related to like the business so there's a lot going on here she's trying to Lily's trying to clear her friend's name and I like the idea of like the cemetery setting and I'm very intrigued by the idea of the graves being rearranged I don't know much about cemeteries but I would think that is not a normal thing to do um like at all <laughs> so I'm think I'm very like intrigued as to why that happened like is there some kind of cover-up or something I think the cover for this it's so bright and beautiful and cheerful absolutely love it. I think the name is really clever too. So that is the end of our new October Cozy Mystery video. If you hung out this long, thank you so much. Um, I hope my voice has been okay. My voice feels like it's giving out a little bit with all 15 of these books, but I hope you guys are excited. Please leave me a comment down below and tell me what books you are most excited for. Did I miss anything that you're excited for that's coming out in October? Please let me know down below. I love hearing your thoughts. And if you've read any of these series and would recommend them, let me know because I'm always trying to narrow down which series to like prioritize and stuff and your recommendations are always really good. So thank you guys again. Don't forget to like and subscribe. My name is Amy Marie. I do lots of book content every single week here on YouTube, especially in the mystery genre. So if you like cozy mysteries or just mysteries in general, thrillers, historical fiction mysteries, I got you covered. I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!